All right, welcome everyone to the third part in this terrain generation series. In this part, we're going to be terraforming our terrain to look a little bit more like uh, realistic terrain. Uh, right now, we have a basic uh, gray triangle mesh, so to speak. But we're going to be adding uh, some color, adding water, as well as some extrusions for mountains and lakes. So that's what we're going to be doing in this part. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by adding some color to my terrain. Uh, our terrain uh, local script is uh, pretty much done. We're just going to be making changes to the chunk object or the chunk class uh, for now or from now on. So uh, the first thing I'll go ahead and do is in my chunk class I want to give uh, some terrain height colors. So it's going to look something like this. And these are going to be the colors that I want to have my terrain be at certain heights. Now I've already gone ahead and made some terrain height colors beforehand, uh, customized them myself. And on the left hand side you can see we have indices. Um, the left hand side is supposed to represent the height that each color is supposed to be at. And on the right hand side we have simply a color 3 object of a certain color and I have a little comment to help me remind what that color actually looks like. So at negative 50 we have sort of a sand yellow. Uh, at negative 10 we have this grassy green color uh, again at 0 and then at 75 I have this uh, stone gray color for the mountains. So as you can see we have different colors at different heights and what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a function that when we pass in a wedge we can sort of paint that wedge to be a certain color depending on what its height is and depending on what we have here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to minimize all of this uh, since I don't need that. And I'm going to make my function right here. Local function paint wedge. Given a wedge. All right, nice. So we actually use a little bit of uh, some logic to figure out this. Uh, so for my input, so to speak, I have to grab the height of the wedge. So I'll do local wedge height is equal to wedge not position dot y, and that's uh, kind of my starting point. And then what I want to end up with is the color that I want to give this wedge. So I'm going to store that in a variable. Uh, I'm just going to make the variable for now. And then at the end of this function, what the result should end up being is that once we have the color, we can simply do wedge.color equals color. Uh, and so between here and here, we actually need to figure out what is this color going to be. Uh, so two variables that I need to uh, make beforehand are lower color height and higher color height. So the first uh, part of this will be figuring out what is the lower color height and the higher color height given a certain wedge height. So I'm going to iterate over all the heights in my height colors. And the first thing I'm going to do is check is this wedge height actually equal to one of these heights. If so, then the color is simply the height color. However, the wedge height is obviously not always going to be one of these four heights. It can be anywhere in between, or uh, it could be higher than 75 or lower than negative 50, or anywhere in between these numbers. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting my lower color height and my higher color height to whatever's just higher or just lower than um, the current height as I iterate over uh, these height colors. So my logic is going to look like this. If the wedge height is greater than the height and uh, the height or, and the height is greater than or I'm sorry less than 
This should be less than. If my wedge height is less than um, the height of this color, and this height is less than the higher color height I already have, then my higher color height equals height. So I hope that makes sense. If the wedge height is, uh, if my wedge's height is lower than this color's height, and the height um, is less than the higher color height that I already have, then um, higher color height will simply be this height. I also have to accommodate for the fact that um, higher color height starts off as nil, so this is actually not not higher color height or height is less than higher color height. And then it's a similar story for the lower color height. Uh, just gonna replace these greater than or less than's with greater than's, and replace higher color height with lower color height. All right. So now, uh, by the time this for loop runs, I'll have a higher color height and a lower color height uh, to work with. Uh, I might also have a color, so I don't actually want to run this next part if I already have a color. So if not color then if higher color height is equal to nil then that means I know that um, there's no color that's higher than what we're at so like if I'm at 80 and the, and the highest number is 75 then higher color height will be nil and I know that the color should be this color so uh, if the if there's no higher color height then just go with the lower color height color equals terrain height colors lower color height and then similar story else if uh, lower color height is equal to nil then color equals terrain height colors uh, higher color height else that means we have a I checked if there's a if higher color height doesn't exist if lower doesn't exist that means they both exist so we need to find some color in between them so to figure out the ratio that I am in between them, I call this the alpha, and that is simply the wedge height minus the lower color height, so the difference between the height uh, we're at and the lower one, divided by the difference between the two uh, heights, the higher color height and the lower color height. I'm also going to grab the lower and the higher color and then set the color to be the interpolated version between those two colors with respect to the alpha. So local lower color equals terrain height colors, uh, lower color height, and local higher color equals terrain height colors, higher color height. And my color will simply be lower color, lerp, higher color alpha all right now uh, I also this is just a personal preference I want to set the uh, material to grass inside of this function so I don't have to put that in a separate uh, line and then let's actually go ahead and use this function so we've got this paint wedge and it takes in a wedge so I'm going to scroll down inside of chunk.new to where we actually make these wedges and just after we make them uh, call paint wedge for wedge A as well as B, C, and D. Now let's go ahead and test it and make sure I did everything right. And it appears as if our grayscale terrain had now has some color going on. I have some greens going on in the middle. I have my sand yellow at the bottom. And I have, if you look up at the top, there's a little bit of a uh, grayish color starting to come on. Uh, as we go, as I make the terrain higher, you'll actually see more of the gray. But for now, uh, you can see it, it's just starting to come out. And uh, you can, of course, play with these numbers to get uh, smoother values or different colors or whatever. But um, that's what I've just gone with, and that's how I do it. All right, so now it's time to actually extrude our mountains a little bit, as well as extrude our um, lakes in a little bit, or our, our dips, so that we have more of a um, 
definition for where the lakes and the mountains are. So this is gonna be a really simple uh, kind of like hack for the uh, position grid. So in our position grid, we're using the get position function, and then in the get position function, we use the get height function. And inside the get height function, we see we return math at noise and all of this times height scale. Well, I'm just gonna get rid of this return and just say local height equals that. So height is just whatever our height was before. And then we'll modify our height and then we'll return that new height. So what I actually wanna do is I wanna say that if a height is already past a certain threshold, that we're gonna actually increase it by a little bit more. So it's gonna look like this. If height is greater than 20, I'm just gonna use the number 20 uh, for now, because that's the number that I, I think is good for this. Of course, you can change that. Uh, I'm gonna say the difference between where it's at and 20 is simply height minus 20. And then I wanna add onto the height so that it uh, accelerates a little bit. So height plus equals difference and then times some value. Uh, I'm gonna go with 1.2. Uh, we obviously don't wanna add anything because if we add by constant then we'll have a little cut in our terrain. We just wanna multiply. We just wanna speed the growth of our mountain so that it actually extrudes a little bit. And then it's a similar story for our uh, lakes. I wanna say, if the height is less than negative 20, our difference is height minus negative 20. Uh, obviously, minus negative 20 is obviously plus 20, but I just like to keep the syllogism between these two statements uh, the same. And the same thing with our height plus equals difference times 1.2. And then we just return the height. And we go ahead and play this now. You'll notice that... Um, once it loads, you'll notice that our mountains actually uh, have grew a little bit, and that's because we are now uh, multiplying it by, we're actually speeding up the growth by like 1.2, and then our lakes have kind of like, where our, our water will be, has sunk in a little bit. So it's a little bit more defined, and we're not gonna get like weird puddles anywhere. We're actually gonna get uh, like either water or not water in a certain area. So, um, yeah, all right, so that's for it for the uh, extrusion of the height. Let's actually go ahead and add water. All right, so here's my um, add water function. And I just want to pass in a chunk that I want to add water to. And there's a couple things that we need. We're going to be using the workspace dot uh, terrain fill block function. And we need a, uh, a C-frame, a size, and we need uh, a material. Obviously the material will be enum.material.water, but we're gonna need to figure out a C-frame and a size. So what that's gonna look like is, the C-frame needs to be the center of the, of the chunk, so to speak. Uh, on the X and Z, and then the Y is just kind of depends on where you actually, how, you know, high or low you want the water. But to find the center of a chunk uh, on its X and Z is, uh, we're gonna take chunk.x, which is the X coordinate, times 0.5, so go to like the halfway through it, um, times uh, chunk dot width scale, or I'm sorry, size x. So chunk.x, remember, is the x coordinate. Uh, this should actually be a plus sign. I'm adding 0.5. So if my chunk.x was 1, this would become 1.5, and then I'm multiplying that by the uh, width of every chunk in, uh, on its x-axis. Uh, remember, we got the width size x and the width size z uh, for our chunks right here. So I'll do the same thing. Uh, I'll leave Y as zero for now, and then I'll do uh, the same thing for Z. So chunk dot Z plus 0.5 times chunk dot width size Z. 
Now for our size, our size is going to look a little bit like this. Uh, size is a vector three, and it should be pretty obvious that the size of our water should be the same as the size of our chunk as far as the x and the z axis. So that's simply going to be chunk dot width size x, comma, and then whatever for the y. Uh, I'll make it ten for now, and then I'll do chunk dot width um, size z. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we're using the workspace dot terrain fill block, and then we actually need to call this function. Uh, after I do the loop that creates all the wedges, that's when I'll call the add water function. So add water, pass in the chunk, and that's it. So let's go ahead and play it. And as you can see, we have some water going on. Uh, it's a bit high right now, so but we're going to be uh, adjusting it. It is also um, only 10 studs high, so uh, it's pretty thin. As you can see, I'm kind of like standing under the water. Anyway, um, but yeah, we have water for every terrain. So you're going to want to play around with the Y position of the C-frame and the Y component of the size. Uh, some numbers that I came up with earlier are negative 70 and 90, which creates uh, water at the position negative 70, and then since the size is 90, uh, it's going to go 45 up and 45 down, so the water goes from uh, negative 25 to negative 115 uh, studs, I believe. Uh, some, something like that. And then not only do we need to uh, fill the block with water, uh, we also need to do the reverse every time a, um, a chunk is being destroyed. So I'm actually going to store uh, water C frame uh, equals C frame. No, nope, not that C frame. C frame chunk dot water size is equal to size. And we're going to keep this stored inside the chunk. So later when the chunk gets destroyed, we can do uh, the same thing we did here. Uh, workspace.terrain fill block, but instead of C frame, we do self.water C frame. Instead of size, I do self.water size. And instead of enum.material.water, I do air. And so now with my new numbers and my ability to actually replace water back with air, when uh, chunks are destroyed, I should have uh, fully functioning water. So uh, I have a nice water level now. I move away, uh, the chunks in the background will destroy and the water will go with it. As I go to regenerate those, uh, the water will come back. And water will just seamlessly generate with the terrain. Uh, no, pr no problem about it. All right, so that wraps up about this part. I uh, hope you guys learned something new in this video. Uh, we're almost done. We just have one more part left to go, and the next part will be adding trees. Uh, can't wait to get to that, so I'll see you guys in that next part.